No, I don't want you in your head at all because it was like, I'm telling you, anyone I talked to, they were like, oh my God, Cassidy. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so That's don't, nice. All right, I won't. Don't, you know. Well, you you didn't help by making the red hair comment right out of the <laughs> gate. Well, as Mindy said, you can't see. Well, we'll see, but that's fine. No, we won't. We're not talking. We can't talk about that because my colorist, if no one else, will be like, shit. <laughs> I, but what was, what were they going for? That? Oh, God. You're just, it's like you're witnessing a car wreck the way you're talking about it. <laughs> well, what was the what was they trying to accomplish I think it here? was whatever you see, but less red. Why would what I do? do it's like Auburn. No? Does it, does it look like I could have this hair color if you didn't know me? Yeah. So it's unnatural. It's just, un, it's, it's, it's not natural to me, but it is a natural hair color. Yeah. I don't know about that. Yes, but I know you, so it's hard for me yeah, to exactly, say. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Welcome to the OC Bitches. Welcome to the OC Bitches. Yes, welcome. Our favorite bitch is here. <laughs> yeah, your favorite bitch. What a start. Oh, my. <laughs> we just like to get right into it yeah. around here. Our favorite bitch is here. <laughs> Listen, everyone. We're on episode 23 of season two, The O.C., and our favorite, Michael Cassidy, is back with us today. He needs no introduction. And if you happen to have missed his first visit to our studio, I suggest you go back and listen first. Let's see if we can top that first visit. <laughs> Try not to suck and repeat yourself, Michael. Thanks for being here. Oh, wow. <laughs> no pressure. You guys are brutal on, this, on, the re on the return here. That's right. Wow. You guys are so sweet on the first one. Which was great because I'm so sensitive. <laughs> but now you don't know how much it's going to shut me down emotionally. He already like walked into the studio <laughs> feeling very self-conscious. Yes, very self-conscious. About critiquing his first performance, so to speak, with us here. I just had notes really? for myself. I don't know what to say. I watched the first take and I had some thoughts. <laughs> I, I, I should say, listen, I listened to it. <laughs> and I felt that I interrupted you with my laughter. Uh, but I said, do not withhold your laughter because yeah. that's like the best part. I also said right and yeah a lot. You did? Let's not do this. We can't. No one wants to listen to actors <laughs> navel gaze. <laughs> navel gaze? I don't know that expression. I, am, I want to be really clear. I'm tickled <laughs> to be back here. Like truly, it is such a delight <laughs> to talk to you two again and to watch the show again. I, I just, I really love watching the show. I, like I said last time, I don't know that I've, how much of it I've ever seen. So it's really fun to watch it again. <laughs> well, it was really fun to watch this episode in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, you had a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, we, we were spinning some plates, me and Seth, trying <laughs> to figure it all out. Yes. You weren't helping. Me? Yeah, it was very simple for some. I was, yes, as it should be. Yeah, you deserve I that. was not about to decide, you two knuckleheads. Just your shenanigans this whole season. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yes. Um, so yes, Michael Cassidy is back here with us. Melinda is still in Puerto Rico and on the computer. Not here yeah. with us personally, but... On a computer. Sorry, guys. Because, you know, <laughs> this kind, this episode, I didn't write a lot of, I didn't write a lot of questions since we really got into some questions in the last episode. But, you know, I basically was like, hey, how's it going? What's up? How's your day? And are you nervous? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> just to let you know that you are a true fan favorite. And we're just so lucky to have you back because, you know, this episode is, um, you know, gone are the fun days. Of the like episodes like the mall episode, this is pure heavy drama filled mm. OC. So you know we need you to laugh, right? Yeah, yeah. I got it <laughs> right. I got to round the edges a little bit because this one comes in sharp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll do my yeah. best with that. <laughs> Again, no pressure. We just like to bring you in yeah. here, like you know, big fan favorite. Your episode is one of the top. Like everyone loved it. So, wow. Yeah. So don't fuck it up. Okay, no, I would never. That's basically our message to you today. We talked to Alan Heinberg, and he said, that guy, how entertaining he was, and why didn't I build a show around him, is what he yep. said. Okay, it so did, she said chance, it better than I did. Yeah. 
Yeah, off mic, you were like, yeah, Alan kind of liked you. You really under... <laughs> I under... I Alan, under if you're it. listening, man, the chance has not passed us by for us to make a show around me, dude. It is... The, strike while the iron's hot, man. I have one more thing for you, Michael. You know, guess who's here in Puerto Rico with me? He's a first AD. His name is Patrick Richmond. Friend oh, of yours. I, oh, my buddy who I met on the OC a hundred years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we're friends. Oh, tell him I say hi. I love Patrick. Yeah, he told me a funny story. He said that his little oh. girl uh, at seven years old looked up at you one day and said, you're pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Sirsha. Sirsha, bless her heart. Sirsha, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um Especially yeah. your hair right now, especially, is yeah. making you pretty. I'm having a good hair day. You you <laughs> noticed it as soon as I walked in, Rachel. And moving on. I actually have some things that we need to talk about besides my hair. Okay, go. <laughs> I think they're on your iPad. <laughs> we just want to make him as uncomfortable as possible. I am beat red right now. <laughs> well, it'll match your Speaking hair. Speaking of red. <laughs> I've been teasing him, Mindy. Oh, oh, God. He got his hair colored. And that's all right. Let's just, what else can we talk about? <laughs> okay. Well, we are mm. going into this episode so called the OC, but the O-S-E-A, the O-C. Mm -hmm. That is the theme for the prom that is going on in this episode. Right? As in mermaids. As in the ocean. <laughs> uh, as in the ocean. All things in the ocean. Yeah. But the, the shells and mermaids really stuck out to me from an art department perspective. Shell there was a, it was heavy mermaid. <laughs> yeah. Heavy on the mermaid. For yeah. Sure. And, and, and I'm sure it wasn't an accident that Mindy looked like the most glorious mermaid ever in the latter half of the episode. <gasps> yeah. In the pool sequence, she too <laughs> looked like a mermaid. She did. And she acted like a mermaid. Meets, well, mermaid meets Flintstones, I think. <laughs> meets Why, were you wearing Tahiti. like a bone necklace? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It looked, it, it was supposed to be a kind of an ode to a Tahitian look, but it ended uh -huh. up looking kind of Flintstone-ish and now mermaid-ish. I haven't heard that one, but yes. Oh, really? <laughs> I, would, I felt it was full Ariel. Full Ariel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the synopsis, do we have? Okay. Zach and Seth are faced with a challenging dilemma that falls on the same night. Who should take Summer to prom and who should go and meet George Lucas to discuss the publishing of their graphic novel? Ryan, suspicious of Trey and Marissa's odd behavior, tries to piece together what happened to them while he was in Miami. Meanwhile, Sandy takes extreme measures to help a recovering Kirsten. And to avoid going broke, Julie decides to poison Caleb, but it takes a surprising turn. Directed by Michael Lang, written by J.J. Philbin, original air date May 12th, 2005. There you have it. Piece of cake. Mm -hmm. Are we done? <laughs> You're like, can I leave? Yeah. I'm going to go get my hair color fixed. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Was there any chance we weren't going to talk about that? <laughs> nope. There was no chance. Nope. My I'm favorite thing. I should have worn thing. a big ass hat. My favorite thing is to give you shit. <laughs> That's the best part of all of this. <laughs> um, so, okay. So, we're in this episode. Uh, any thoughts before we begin and in going into each scene? I mean, I, 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 you know me, I did my homework. Like I, this opening scene, I love so much. Like I, I'm sure it's again, as a, as a, basically a new viewer, I, the, the, he wakes him up at five 30 in the morning with his little knees up by his chest, bless his heart. And he's just like, now that we're awake, I have a lot of stuff to say. I, I will say like, from a, I w wasn't planning on talking this much about this scene, but I <laughs> it's very hard, and I know you guys know this, to do these kind of scenes that this show does so well, which is characters talking about what is happening when nothing is happening. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you you can't uh, the we in these kind of in this kind of television we talk about what will happen and what has happened uh, more than we actually do things, and that's just the nature of this kind of TV, and. This scene and the scenes like it are just so wonderful. Like, their relationship is so funny and so strong. Seth and Ryan. Yeah, Seth and Ryan, right. And it just sets up the whole, um, everything is going, like, Adam sits there and tells us everything that's going on, <laughs> and Ryan tells us, without saying anything, how important each of the things is. He just sort of ranks it based on the face that he makes in response and we know exactly where we're at. I hadn't seen the episode prior, and oh. I knew where I was. 
because of this scene. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I think that it's just amazing. I think it's, you know, the acting's really good, but the writing is, I, I would imagine it's very difficult to write these kinds of scenes, too. Yeah, it's a lot of talking, especially on Seth's behalf. Yeah, the so in a script, um, I don't know if people know this, but the opening is called a teaser, literally teases what's going to happen in the episode. And you're right, exposition is one of the hardest things to, for actors to be successful at or to feel comfortable and to do it as a character. Um, Adam does it such a, so, so well. He's very proficient in that. And like you said, the writing was done. It was getting information across to people but yet at the same time, it was character driven. And I mean, I just love the fact that, yes, he's getting earlier and earlier. And it's to the point where <laughs> Ryan's like, we talked about this last night. And he's like, yeah, but I have more. And he's like, because it's um the prom. He's actually ending his or finishing his sentences for him because he knows it so well. And he's so patient with his brother. I'd be so, I'd tell him to get the hell out, right? I like when he says, uh, it, what do you think he was borrowing one of her newsboy caps? About Trey and Marissa. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Well, and Seth can be very unselfish sometimes. And these are those moments. I mean, when it comes to himself, obviously, he's a whole different, you know, different world. But when he's when he sees Ryan suffering in a way like that, he does have a voice of reason, I think. Ish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a voice of reason. Yeah. I agree with that. It's not the voice of reason. Right. But there's no adults yeah. on this show. There's just people who are different generations. You know, it's very important that there not be right. any adults on this television show. <laughs> well, I don't know. I think Summer is pretty mature. That's actually true. Yeah, I, I was about to correct myself and say really? that. Really? Yeah, really. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, you were just throwing it out? You yeah. didn't even mean it? No. Oh, I think that's exact. I think you're so wise. <laughs> Uh, were you the first person to say that about Summer? I said the last time I was here, I yeah. think that she was really awake. Like she had gone through this summer and she had come through in the sort of spiritual sense, very awake. Like through the birth canal and then she came out. No, more in the Buddhist woman. sense. Like she had awakened. She had an awakening experience. All right, go back to the iPad. Let's get, let's get back on topic here. He's like going to make me just like stay on track here because... I'll just take yeah. him down. <laughs> so at the end of the scene, they get a phone call. And shockingly, it's Sandy calling from the hospital. And mom's been in an accident. And California, here we come. Opening credits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can we talk about, though, so, the fact that she was in an accident, you know, in the last episode? You see that it's like a Mack truck coming yeah. towards her. Yeah. And when we cut to the hospital and she just has a black eye? Yeah. I mean, let's just... She had sprained fingers, but a T-bone like that uh, is pretty difficult, I would assume, to recover from. But she got lucky, right? Well, we needed Kirsten in the OC, so... Yeah. <laughs> it's probably yeah. more what happened there. But this is another thing. So she's in the hospital, right? And then the police officer comes in and the boys are there and Seth's going on and on about X-Men and that was just a whole other thing. But she she blew a point oh eight in the breathalyzer, right? Yeah. And that's like the legal the, limit. Right. I'm like, dude. I know. Like, come on. I know. She, you know she's blowing at least like a one point something. It occurred to me that like, <laughs> one, I don't know. One point is like you're dead. I think. Is it? Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I'm not a drinker. But yeah. But I think it it definitely occurred to me that like the show is so scandalous in certain ways. Mm -hmm. Why didn't they just go for it? You know what I mean? Like she, she's got a drinking problem. You know, like why did she blow the exact <laughs> legal limit yeah. where it's like, I mean, it does make it more believable that um, the officer lets her get away with it. Right. You know, because like he has a, a good relationship yeah. with Sandy. Yeah. But yeah. he's not. She wasn't. I don't know. I think you're right in that. I guarantee you the writers were in the writer's room and they're, they're saying, okay, now let's explore the DUI storyline. And and they went, yeah, that's a lot of extra work. Or it's just not a place that they wanted to go because Sandy has friends everywhere. And sure, you know, luckily for Kirsten, that it is it is very convenient that it's a .08. And I'll also... If she's in a car accident like that, does she have the ability to actually blow? 
You know what I mean? Oh, that's I I didn't yeah. even think of that. That's a great point. That is a great point. Although yeah. she only has a black eye, so she was able. Yeah, to she block. walked away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she walked away. She walked I guess away. So. Yeah. yeah, they gave her a sobriety test, and the you know I know you were just in an accident, but you still have to walk the line. Come on, honey, get out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, you know the way she looked after that, I believe anything. I love Peloton. They have a team of world-class instructors ready to motivate you 24-7, which on some days, I really do need that extra motivation. And Because, you know, some days I'm in the mood for yoga and other days I just need a quick cardio fix like boxing or the bar. And then some days I've been known to get a second wind and do all three, even at midnight recently. Don't ask, but yes, 24-7 or whenever it suits me. Peloton classes are there. I love all of these dance classes on this bike. I mean, I feel like I'm in a dance class, but I'm sitting down, which is even better. Who doesn't like a sit dance? I can't wait to try the next one. I did Cody Rigsby's Groove Ride. It was so much much fun. <laughs> right now is the perfect time to try out Peloton. The Peloton Bike Plus is now $500 less. It's best price yet, including free delivery and setup. And there are more game-changing prices available on the original Peloton Bike and Peloton Tread. Visit onepeloton.com to learn more. Meal prepping for the week can be so difficult, but ButcherBox has made my life so much easier. ButcherBox sources their meat from partners with the highest standards for quality. 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, wild-caught seafood, and more. I love all of the meats that come in ButcherBox. I'm serious. I actually, I love meat. That sounds weird. But like, I am a meat girl. Uh, I love a really good steak, chicken. We have so much of it in our house. So when we get it from ButcherBox, I love knowing where it's coming from and knowing that it's going to be up to the highest standard. I... Love getting the wild salmon, and I make this salmon dish. I make it every week. In fact, I'm going to make it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized it's on my it's on my calendar. It's uh, I do, I get the uh, my cast iron skillet out, and I get the skin really crispy, mm. and then I char some cauliflower in the skillet too, and I get some sauteed mushrooms, arugula, toasted pecans, lemon drizzle, some olive oil. It's delicious. It's healthy. It's food medicine. <laughs> <laughs> Every month, ButcherBox ships a curated selection of high-quality meat right to your home. You can customize your own box or go with one of theirs. Either way, you get exactly what you want with no antibiotics or added hormones. Kick off grilling season right with ButcherBox. Sign up at butcherbox.com slash the OC to receive a free grilling bundle in your first order. You'll get two 10-ounce ribeyes, five pounds of chicken drumsticks, and a pack of burgers for free. That's butcherbox.com slash the OC to claim this deal. But okay, so then we're at school and Marissa and Summer are discussing the OC. My skirt I am wearing, you guys, like <laughs> I feel like I can see my underwear, like G string, like popping out. Uh -huh. Yeah. I know that like low rise was a big thing. We've talked about it in the early aughts, but like, good Lord. Yeah. How do you do anything in those clothing? And those clothing and those and you know what I'm saying. I noticed too. And it and I it was shades of where we're headed in terms of mermaids. I'm just gonna keep <laughs> I am I'm just gonna keep sewing that in because it was the beginning that's the start of your tail of your fish parts. And of my fish parts. And then Mindy goes full mermaid and we have mermaid. It's, it's so a, that's the theme. Yeah, that's the theme. I'm going to look for all these Easter right. eggs throughout this episode of Mermaids. And yeah. I like that you just related my skirt <laughs> to a mermaid yeah. tail. Yeah. That my tail was basically hanging out. It's like the production meeting they sat down. They were like, okay, we're going bottom of the sea in every way in this episode. <laughs> so, yeah. And Michael Cassidy will get it. He'll get it. <laughs> That's how it went. She's not going to go to prom probably with Ryan. Be and Summer's like, hmm, what's up with that? Come on, figure it out. And then she discusses that she's not going to get to go to, to prom as well. So, yeah. But she wants a These date, bozos. right? Between nerd boy and ass clown. <laughs> <laughs> Do you go by ass clown often? Is that stuck with you? Aren't I nerd boy? <laughs> <laughs> that's Actually, yes. That's interchangeable, if you ask me. Oh, how dare you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Lots of drama going on around this prom. And then... Julie comes by to check on Kirsten, but you don't really. You're just, you're, aren't you showing up to yeah. talk to? She comes by with a gift basket and he, he says, uh, so what's up? Why'd you come by? And she's like, 
Tandy, I did not come by to talk about myself. But while we're on the subject, here we go. Yes. And he's, she hands him this paper and he's like, it's not one of your naked photos. She's like, it, it's my prenup. I love, I love the scenes between Julie and Sandy because, you know, he barely tolerates her. But there's some kind of like, there's, there's something friendly, I guess, between the two of them. But yes, he, he says that the prenup is ironclad and it's been a, it's been what, 11 months and 27 days and Caleb <laughs> is going to divorce her Yeah, when he files on Monday. And she's, she's shit out of luck. Yeah. Oh, well, I wanted to say something here that was kind of an interesting thing. At the very end, this is, this is Mindy and her vanity talking, but what a great DP we had because it was a super, super close up. And, it, and I was like, oh my God, that is a pretty picture. Because if you actually took, you, took the actor, me, and put me outside in the sun, I would look completely different. Right. You know what I mean? Like the, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. just knowing that the, the, the lighting and framing and everything, it was just a very pretty picture. And our DP did a very wonderful job. But it's also like, you know, it's also embrace the wrinkles now, ladies, as, it, as we get older. I hear you. Also, we shot the show, at least in the second season, we shot around 16. So everybody looked good. What does that mean Compared to, to the people listening? Uh, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know if they did after I left the show, which is coming very soon. Uh, <laughs> but um, <laughs> but the 16 millimeter film. So this was one of the only things I've ever worked on that was shot on film. And what that means for the people listening is that <clears throat> it's not shot onto a disc like your phone does. It's shot on, which is what? A mo- disc? There's mo- a disc in my phone? There's a there's a storage unit of some sort. You somehow tricked me into being the worst expert witness about <laughs> phone and filming technology, and that is quite a trick. But back in the day, we shot on these big mags of actual film, right? And then it was digitized, and film was kinder to uh, actor skin than uh, dig- digital. Yeah, know. like the yeah, high it def. was just different. But the high, high def looks different. I, again, like I'm sure this can be sort of circling the drain of vanity. <laughs> But it's a nice little tidbit, too. We shot it yeah. on film. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll take yeah. it. Sure. We sure did. We sure did. Oh, now, okay, so now Zach you're, enters the episode at school. Seth and Zach mm-hmm. discuss summer and the prom. They 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 make up. They're so, they say, we can make oh, up. Yeah. And, and, you know, they had this big fight over the comic book. And it was like, and and... You know, Zach came out full demon water polo player. And I was like, see, there's the real guy. And then all of a sudden they're making up. And I was so surprised that they were making making up. And I thought, is this something that guys do, Michael? Like girls would hold that oh. grudge for a while. But guys are like, okay, we're done. Let's move on. What do you oh, think? Oh, um, yes, is probably the short answer. I mean, the it yeah. never occurred to me that that that, that would last. Um, as I was watching it or when we were making it. Like, it, it just seemed... Yeah, so yeah, the short answer is that... I mean, I don't know. I don't know because I've never been a girl. But I I, I don't... <laughs> I, I've had relationships sure? go like that. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I guess I'm not sure. <laughs> it, um, I mean, we can talk about reincarnation. We already talked about awakening. <laughs> uh, we can it's talk like about deadpan look over to me if you could only see. Because I'm just like... <laughs> It's like every time I say something, it's just a little bit out there. I know I'm just serving up something for you to just like shove in my face like a pie. I just bring out all the line of pie. Uh, I'm Racket Rachel over here. Um, We're in the lounge and right. So this is where I'm like, you guys are deciding who's taking me. Yeah. Which is, I think, extremely clever. Again, writing. Or me. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's a written show. <laughs> we learned the lines. Um, but yeah, I, I thought th- it's, it's, it's delightful. That's a delightful thing you do there, I think. I just like that she's just like, I don't give a shit. You guys yeah. figure it out. But yeah, I am going. One of you is taking me. Mm-hmm. And I, I, don't, I don't want any more of what I just saw the other day. Right. Yeah. Right, because we, we forgot to mention that Seth was explaining in the beginning and throughout this that it's been your dream since fifth grade to have this epic prom, which I guess is a junior prom because you guys are juniors. So there's another one next year too. 
So. I think that's when they held us all back a year and Brody almost had a conniption fit because it was supposed to be senior year. They're like, nope, we need one more year. You guys are going back a grade. And he was like, what the shit, man? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Do you remember that? I thought that? I was a junior <laughs> and graduating. Yeah. Yeah. No, so yeah. yeah, I don't know if it was like, the, I think, I feel like it was something like that. Because I noticed that too, like junior prom. Like, what? And I'm like, oh, yeah, they had, yeah. To, mm-hmm, they needed another year of high school out of us. Wait, but at my high school, the juniors and seniors went to prom. Yeah, I had a, yeah. did I have a junior? I think, yeah. But they weren't separate. There, there are junior proms. Yeah, for different schools. Especially oh. if a private school can have their own traditions. Oh. But. Private. Everyone does something different, I guess. I don't know. I just thought that they made it junior prom because they needed to hold us back a year. But I'll ask Schwartz about that. <laughs> It's probably a sore subject. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. Anyway, I like summer. Oh, and then you get a text on your flip phone. And I'm like, could you text on Cup- flip phone? Yeah, I a guess couple of could- flip phone text. But yeah, you had to hit the letter. The, the letter that, and right. get to the to number the letter, to get to the letter. That's right. Yeah. 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 And read. And you every time, though, that you present something in this episode, it just seems like you're plotting. But you're not because there is a meeting with Reed later. But it just seems like you're like, oh. But you mean my character seems... Sinister? Yeah. Well, a little manipulative, but you're not... But it- Your character <laughs> seems to... Every time there's a meeting that you flaunt it in front of Summer to say, oh, no, you can't do that. Oh. You can't go to the concert. We've got to go to this party. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. You know, you, you're, uh, Zach is really relishing in the schadenfreude of, of what it's doing to their relationship. A lot of Zach's credibility with you two, it sounds like, went out the window with the Italy <laughs> lies. It was the episode before when he finally says, when they were they were like, what do you mean? How can you do this? And Zach literally goes, dude, I'm a water polo player. Come <laughs> on. You should have known. <laughs> like, I've been, you literally said, he's like, I, this has been a facade the whole time. Wow. In the Cohen bedroom, uh, Kirsten is resting and I, she has this, she has a sprained hand and she has apparently <laughs> she has they a had broken to cut nail. her wedding rings. Mm-hmm. So. She got a hematoma on her head. <laughs> Concussions happen on the inside, so we don't yeah. we can't see that. And those are that's a serious thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, she's been through a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Sandy gives her a re a, a rehab brochure mm. and mm-hmm. she says, What's that? And he says, you know, it's the best facility. And she says, You're sending me to rehab. And he says, I'm asking you to go. Mm. And she says, No. What? No, it's not that big of a problem. And by the end of the scene, she says, come on, let's go pour out every drop in this house. And he says, I'm right behind you. And then I thought, do you remember when Caleb was always asking for the, you know, Kiki open that expensive bottle of wine and at Thanksgiving and the holidays, they probably have a wine collection that is way more expensive than any fancy rehab. And they she ain't pouring that out. Be selling it, <laughs> not necessarily pouring it out, or right? at least gifting it. Yeah, absolutely. Selfish. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I know it's like somebody's life or the expense of wine. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a life for sure. Um, okay, so at school, <laughs> Ryan finds Marissa. I just want to point out, you and Mar- Julia and Marissa both have yellow and blue on, like her top and your top. I don't know if that was planned. Oh. I know it's a little thing I noticed. Mine was, oh, wait, that's another Flintstones, those big blue things oh, that yeah, I was your wearing. Oh, yeah, your necklace. That yellow. And- There's a theme going. A mermaid. <laughs> blue bead. Mermaid. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it. okay, yeah. I'm with you on this. I'm supporting your theory here, Michael. Thank you. You're welcome. It's the only thing I'll well, do, Well, think, think about it. Wilma, who, who wears the big um, necklace in the Flintstones? Wilma. Yeah, yeah I think it's Wilma. I, yeah. I feel like they both do. Okay. All right. We'll leave that there. Wilma's a little I'm more going with that. fashion forward. Flintstones. <laughs> Welcome back to the Flintstones podcast. <laughs> I'm Michael Cassidy. I'm here with my guest, Rachel Bilson. Oh, jeez. Okay. So in this episode, Fred's got his feet right on the ground while he's driving his car. <laughs> oh, my God. From the courtesy of Fred's two feet, we're, we're going. <laughs> oh, man. To the movies tonight. <laughs> okay, so at school, Ryan finds Marissa and... Uh, what is it? What that, happened? What? Well, he 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 comes, he wants to know what's going on, mm-hmm. and he just says the wrong thing. He what basically does he say? flat out says, "Yeah." Well, he's like, "I need to know what's going on," and she was like, "He goes, what? What do you mean?" And she and he says, "I saw Trey leaving your house, right. 
And she goes, oh, that, well, what, why? What do you think? And he said, what, what am I supposed to think? Oh, you think we hooked up? And he's like, well, if the shoe fits, that's kind of, he's just jumping to that conclusion. And she goes, yeah, no, dude. And she's, she says, we didn't hook up. Why don't you ask your brother what happened? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's insulting. She's balancing, you know, she's really walking this very fine line of, you know, these poor women that go through something like that, having to deal with like keeping it a secret and then, and protecting Ryan and just trying to help, hope, hopefully, you know, maybe that this whole thing will go away. She doesn't have anyone to support. So it's, it's, it's a deep storyline. Olipop is a new kind of soda. I like saying that. Olipop. It tastes just like the sodas I grew up with. But unlike other sodas that are full of corn syrup and artificial ingredients, Olipop is made with natural ingredients that are actually good for you. I love Olipop. They have delicious nostalgic flavors like vintage cola, classic root beer, orange squeeze, cherry vanilla, strawberry vanilla, and their newest flavor, classic grape. I love that I can feel good about giving this to my daughter because she wants to try pop. I don't know why I just called it pop. That's what they say in Canada. Pop. Uh, but... <laughs> Because it's called Olipop. Oh, it's called Olipop. <laughs> That's why I said pop. Yeah. Anyway, I love having her drink this because you get the flavors, you get the whole sensation, but you're not giving her all the crap. Actually, I love the tropical punch and, of course, a classic root beer. I also love that they use functional ingredients that combine the benefits of prebiotics, plant fiber, and botanicals to support your microbiome and benefit digestive health. Olipop is so confident you will love their products that they offer a 100% money-back guarantee for orders placed through their website. Go to drinkolipop.com slash the OC or use code the OC at checkout to receive 20% off plus free shipping on your order. That's D-R-I-N-K-O-L-I-P-O-P.com slash the OC. Olipop can also be found in over 8,000 stores across the country, including Kroger, Target, Whole Foods, Sprouts, and Wegmans. Public Goods is the one-stop shop for sustainable, high-quality, everyday essentials made from clean ingredients at an affordable price. Everything from personal care and household products to coffee, toilet paper, shampoo, pet food, and more, Public Goods is your new everything store thoughtfully designed for the conscious consumer. I like that I don't have to think about buying everything clean. And they just send it to me. They yeah. send me everything with clean ingredients. And then I don't have to think. When I don't have to think, that's a win for me. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing what's in your products and where they come from is so important. Public Goods also uses a membership model to keep costs low and pass on even more savings to their customers. Best of all, you can make your first purchase with no obligation. Their bottles are made from sugarcane. All the paper products are tree-free, and I love affordable, chemical-free, and cru cruelty-free cleaning and beauty products. We've worked out an awesome deal. Receive $15 off your first public goods order with no minimum purchase. That's right. They are so confident that you will absolutely love their products and come back again and again that they are giving you $15 to spend on your first purchase. You have nothing to lose. Just go to publicgoods.com slash the OC or use code the OC at checkout. That is P-U-B-L-I-C-G-O-O-D-S dot com forward slash the OC to receive $15 off your first order. Let's go to lunch with you. Yeah, with you, Zach, Seth, and Reed. Yes, with Marguerite Moreau. Yes. Yes. And you guys are apologizing for the disaster that you created. Yeah. And I think Adam was making me laugh so hard. If you watch it back, <laughs> I'm doing something strange with my hands. And I think it's because it's my coping <laughs> technique for... <laughs> Me just laughing at Adam so <laughs> Wait, much. Wait, your show us your coping technique with well, your hands. In this what case, do do? I was at a table in that diner on that pier. Yeah. And I, I'm so hunched forward and I'm working with my hands. And even after she <laughs> leaves us and we're trying to figure out what to do, I'm still doing this thing with my hands. And I think I'm just dealing with how funny Adam is. <laughs> like, I'm just trying to deal with like, he just made me laugh so hard. Um, and... And I had yet at that point to work with an actor who either said different words take to take or just said them in a the same words in a completely different way from take to take. And I just felt like nothing, I, I don't know what's going to happen. And that's my seatbelt. That's my like <laughs> little safety blanket is like whatever strange thing I'm doing with my hands. And the moment I saw myself doing it when I watched it this time, 
I was like, yep, that's what was going on that day. <laughs> like, he was. And I remember, Mark, like, I will laugh. I'm a laugher. Mm-hmm. And Marguerite <laughs> would have a good time. She was delightful to work with. But she wouldn't, like, lose her mind, like, turn herself inside out the way that I went. And so there was an added sort of social pressure to just, like, not go there and to squeeze the fingers. And so that's what I'm doing in that scene. <laughs> that was your way of being super professional. You're, like, yeah. trying to hold it together. But really, I just look like a guy who, like, can't even get the, the simple apology out. And then can't, like, why is it so hard to do the math on what you're doing after she walks away, too? It's like, he just looks a little befuddled in this episode, <laughs> Zach. Did you notice that in a lot of the Seth's, um, the Seth, Zach scenes, that they're constantly either um, apologizing? And Seth says he, he remains the same character as, you know, selfish or the, his, his apology is kind of, you know, have faked or it's but Zach says exactly what people want to hear like he's super professional yeah and Seth is like oh I was gonna say that and and because he he gets things done and knows exactly what to say yes as opposed to Seth just remains himself constantly he doesn't ever ever vary from who he is yeah 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 that's right yeah yeah (laughs) and then so you guys here you're gonna meet George Lucas or someone is but both of you can't both of us can't because right. one of us needs to take Summer to the prom. <laughs> right. And, and one you, one of us needs to meet George Lucas. And, and you know, you both really want to meet George Lucas. And I got to say, watching it, I was like, thanks a lot, man. Wait. <laughs> that you both were like, really wanted to meet George Lucas. Neither one of you were like, no, I'm going to prom. Oh, come on, no, Rachel. Like, let's be no. real here. Just, I mean, <laughs> I it's saw George it. Lucas. <laughs> That's fair. I would have gone he and met him too. He directed The Phantom Menace. <laughs> For a second, I was going to be like, what? It's that. What's yeah. the prize? <laughs> well, is it going to prom or is it George uh, Lucas? No, it's it's George Lucas. It's obviously going to prom no. with Rachel Bilson's character, Summer. <laughs> yes. But Yes, it is. <laughs> we can't just skip <laughs> to the George end. It's George Lucas. It's fine. You know, I've had enough experience <laughs> with that world. You've been turned down Before for George show. Lucas. What? Before. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> like, you've had somebody pick George Lucas over you <laughs> since we filmed this. <laughs> you know what? That's probably accurate. Mm-hmm. Yep. Let's, 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 let's uh-huh. unwrap that let's, for a minute. Yeah, let's talk about that a little more. <laughs> My hair's not looking so red now, is <laughs> it? <laughs> it's looking redder. It matches your face. <laughs> <laughs> it is salty in here. <laughs> oh, you caught me on a good day. <laughs> okay. Um... <laughs> Okay, so now, yeah, so now there's the dilemma, who's going to go where? Uh, And I know what happens. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, both happens. Yeah, that's true. You know? I got to put a tux on. You did? Yeah. And we'll get to that because, oh boy. Okay. We're at the Cohen house. Mm -hmm. And first of all, Caleb arrives to see Kirsten and he's upset and of course concerned. And he instantly says to, he's like, drunk driving? My first thought is, who told him? Like Sandy picked up the phone and said, you know, told told him the truth. He hasn't told anybody else, right? But he mm. told, tells. But of course, that's kind of neither here nor there because it, it leads up to a really, a very, very famous scene for Kirsten. And this whole season, I've been looking for Easter eggs from Kelly's performance leading up to this scene mm. because I knew it was coming. And, and I know there was some criticism about oh, all of a sudden she's just this alcoholic. And it was like, no, there were some very subtle, just because they weren't talking about it all this time, there were some very subtle things. And a lot of it comes down to this relationship with Caleb, that sh- that it comes out very quickly in this, where she says, look, I made an error in judgment. And he's like, oh, come on. And first, first of all, this is not what she needs right now. Sandy is right. She doesn't need this shameful, pissed off anger, which ultimately is because he's scared for her, right? But- you know, she says, why do you think mom drank this much? And says the most famous line, shall you do the honors, Rachel? I think Michael should. Wait, what? Here, Sorry. see that red right there? Read yeah. that. <laughs> Read the red? Yeah, oh, no, Read the I red. I feel like I'm at work. I may like my Chardonnay, but I'm not going to die alone. And that's more than I can say for you. That is fire. That's good. <laughs> Red's the right color for that line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, and her delivery. I mean, that was very Ooh. heated. And There's nothing like when your parent has hurt you and you tell them that they have hurt you and you are an adult person with children. 
There is nothing like those, that yeah. Venn diagram right there. <laughs> I, well, I wouldn't know. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's true, though. I mean, it's a very intense scene. I can't think of any other character on the OC who's had this much of an, an intense confrontation. Can you? <laughs> mm, uh... I can't uh, think of any. Julie didn't do this. She didn't handle her anger that way. Right, like the um, face Kirsten to face. Kirsten has yeah. some very... Yeah, I don't know. Ryan Ryan gets heated. Yeah, that's true. But he runs. He's a runner. And in that... in that. But he, he, yeah. he fights. Okay. He punches. Yeah. All right. Fair. Yeah. Anyway, that was just an observation. Thank you so much for listening. Follow, rate, and review. Welcome to the OC Bitches wherever you listen to your podcast. And if you like to watch us, check it out on YouTube. And stay tuned for part two of the OC with Michael Cassidy. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to start with the pilot episode and catch all of our episode recaps.